So here are a bunch of different income opportunities, right? That you guys can potentially engage in your practice that you can add to your financial coaching practice, right? So none of these require certifications. Some of these do require licenses. So there's a difference between certifications and licenses, right? A certification is like credibility, notoriety, right? Influence, right? It's uh, almost like a title. But when you have a license, that means you're authorized to sell a particular product or service, right? And as a financial coach, the beautiful thing about coaching, being a financial coach, is you're not limited to just the coaching, right? You're not limited to just the coaching. You're also not bound by any organization like FINRA, right? Or SEC, where you're limited as to what you can and can't say on the internet. Now, obviously you need to have your own uh, uh, filter, of course, right? That makes sense so that we don't get canceled, silenced, right? Demonetized for whatever reason, but you're able to have a multitude of relationships where you can have all these different streams of incomes. Whereas if you were to get a certification from a, uh, a financial coaching business model, right? Certification or whatever, and you're a financial advisor and you have that particular license, there are some things that you can't actually do or can't make money from, right? Um, and there's some high level certifications like CFP, Certified Financial Planner, um, and some other certifications that literally prevent you from making income in other areas on the same client that you're serving, right? So this is why it, it's very unique to position yourself as a financial strategist, financial consultant, financial coach, right? financial counselor, right? All those different things. So just going through the list real quick, life insurance license that we can, as a financial coach, I can be a life insurance agent that also provides whole life annuities, term life, or maybe if you do IUL, I forgot to add that, then that's another, those are additional products and services that you can get paid for, right? Health insurance license. That's something that I'm working on right now, right? A lot of money to be made in that space. Everybody needs health insurance, right? So as you're coaching a client, you're looking through their numbers. If you have education background around health insurance, possibly you can help someone save money on their health insurance expense, right? Which would increase cash flow, which would increase the efficiency of the strategy that you gave to them, right? Same thing with... um. PNC insurance, property and casualty insurance, all different types of insurances. What you need to make your clients uh, aware of is the whole idea of, you know, always shopping around for, for better deals and better, better offers. Insurance companies are constantly changing rates, changing fees, and there's always different deals going on. So having that awareness and or relationships with a PNC person, with a health insurance person, with a life insurance person is going to allow you to build those, you know, affiliate streams, referral income, right? Um, possibly even equity in a company, depending on how much you do for that other, you know, other person. Liability insurance, legal protection services, legacy and estate planning services, tax planning services, right? Those are things that you're gonna talk about to your client. And that's money on the table. If you have a connection where you can tie someone to that service, for example, we got, I saw Mr. Ramos is in the house, Minor Ramos. Some of you guys already know who that is. You've seen him in my uh, live streams. He has a service around that. So when I have clients that start talking to me about estate planning and legacy, first person I think of, oh, I talked talk to, let me send them over to Minor, right? That's something, that's the type of positions you want to be in. Teaming up with a financial advisor is something I've never done yet, but I would consider it, right? Haven't done it yet, but I would consider it. And that is when maybe you maybe you score a high net worth client and it might make sense for them to talk to a financial advisor where they can maybe put their money into some retirement vehicles or some tax advantage vehicles that a financial advisor can actually do, you know, or a wealth manager, an investment advisor, manager, you know, all those different titles might be worth it. Teaming up with a sales media marketing company, I think is very unique. This is something that I did with um, Alex Albaran. He's my sales media and marketing guy. And for you, you, if you know someone or you build a relationship with someone on the internet, it's something that 
every business will need if they want to survive in the 21st century. They're going to need content. They're going to need media attention. They're going to need marketing. So if you know someone that does that, you're a financial coach. And let's say Amanda wants to deal with what? She wants to work with mom preneurs. Okay, so she wants to work with mompreneurs that are going to be starting businesses, then it would be wise for her to spend time on, you know, maybe connecting with another mompreneur that does sales, media, marketing. You know what else might happen? The clients that you serve, the businesses that they start may actually complement your business. And that's a way to help your client make even more money because you're like, hey, I do this, you do that. Let's work together. Let's let's co-create. Co all right. Um, real estate partnerships. That's huge, especially if you're doing velocity banking. You're helping people pay off their properties, pay off their mortgages. Right. Pay down, gain access to the equity. It'd be nice to know someone who's a real estate agent, a broker, loan officer. Right. People who work at the bank, different banks. Um, that's huge. <clears throat> like I said, this list will be provided, um, but you can take your notes now and you're like, OK, I like this. You know, maybe you could pick one or two out of the list and you can start there and work your way. The last thing you want to do is try to get all of these things, right? That's the last thing you want to do is try to get all these things set up and guess what you're doing. Now you're now you're going to confuse your client because they're going to be like, wait, what do you do? You're an insurance agent and you're a, a this and you're that. And what? So make sure you have that one thing that you do really well. And then when certain conversations come up about a particular topic, you just have that in your back pocket and you can just say, hey, I have a person for that. I'll send you a link. Right. You can get started on that as we're doing this. Right. And this way you don't overwhelm your client either, which is also very important. Um, financial literacy education. Those of you who want to teach finance, there's a difference between teaching financial education and coaching. Big difference. Right. What I do on YouTube is teaching. I'm teaching people velocity banking, infinite banking, kingdom authority, showing them the case studies. Right. That's teaching. Coaching is when they take that next step and they're actually paying you and now you're walking them, you're hand-holding, you're walking them through a process and you might implement some conversations that allows that person to open up emotionally about their finances that can unlock their full potential because of a previous philosophy that they had or, or mindset around money, right? So that's, you know, where, where coaching comes in. But financial literacy education, there's a lot of money to be made right now in the marketplace. Why is that? Pay attention to the personal finance mandate laws that are coming, right? In the news, in politics, we're, we're now seeing um, different states mandating that schools have to have a personal financial literacy class of some sort as early as, I don't know, middle school, high school. If that's the case, just because they pass a law doesn't mean they actually have a curriculum yet. So who do they go to for the curriculum? Guess who? People like me, people like you. If you position yourself properly in your local state, county, government, municipality, right? You make the right relationships. You could potentially create a curriculum according to what your local high schools, middle schools, private schools may need, right? And then now you're essentially contracting with a government entity or public school system of your local area. And there's a lot of money to be made there. And guess what? You're not coaching anyone. You're simply teaching a curriculum that then gets retaught by other people. And now you're helping tens and thousands of people. So there's some, you know, there's some pros to that. Uh, working with an existing financial coaching business model is something that I'm actually working on for myself because I know that I'm young, I have a lot to learn. I could maybe work under someone who already has a coaching business model and service all of their clients. And I could be an addition, additional asset to that organization. Maybe you don't wanna do this alone, right? So that might be something to consider. Also building relationships with banks that offer the debt tool, especially if you're teaching Velocity Banking. The all-in-one loan with CMG Financial, that's a good relationship to build. First Lean HELOC with First Savings Bank, that's a good you know relationship to build. Local credit unions in your state, if you want to niche down, for example, Christy is in the house with us. She, I think, is in Tennessee, correct me if I'm wrong, but she's got, um, she wants to start in her local area. I think Amanda wants to do the same thing. Pearl in South Carolina doing the same thing. She is, you know, in her local area 
you know, recently Pearl just Pearl just put together an event. We had about 40 people show up, right? And Pearl's nowhere near the amount of followers that I have now. And I was afraid to do something like that. I'm like, oh my God, this woman put together a whole event and got all these people to show up. That's awesome. That's because she's locally known. People know her of her fruit, so they trust her. And so that's a strategy as well, is you can you can build locally in your neighborhood church, nonprofit, organizations, company that you worked at to provide the services that you want to provide. If you're, you know, very scared or fearful about, you know, getting in front of the camera and recording content on social media, I, I get it, right? But you you, you have to figure out the, the strategy that's going to work best for you. Um, but also don't don't not ever do content, right? You definitely want to consider it because you're going to need it, right? It, it's a want now and it's a, it's an accessory. But as we keep going more and more into the future, it's going to be a necessity to have a social media following in order for people to find your business and for people to trust you, okay? Uh, building relationship with nonprofits, churches, organizations, right? We covered that. And ideally, you want to find these organizations, churches, nonprofits that align with your ideal avatar, your clientele. So back to Amanda, who wants to work with mompreneurs. I know there are some big organizations. There's one called The Mom Link. You can write that down, Amanda. The Mom Link. They're on Clubhouse. They have a massive following, I believe, of women, moms trying to build businesses. Then there is uh, Alexa Carlin with Women Empower X, okay? And you can just Google mompreneurs, right? Or, you know, uh, networking groups for moms, networking groups for mom CEOs, for mom bosses. Like, look for the hashtags. Find these communities that are, you know, massive, big Facebook followings that you can explore and see, you know, which groups you, you really like and where you can integrate with. And just imagine if you build a strong relationship with the founder or someone that runs that group and you get in their ear and now they're sending you all their people because you do something they don't that they would love to have in their organization. And I've done that now with a couple of different um, organizations, a couple of different groups. They're like, I'm first name pick. That's what you want to do. You want to be first name pick for some of these different organizations, right? Uh, another thing is health and wellness businesses to collaborate with, right? As much as you're helping them with their finance, right? And they start talking about health and travel and lifestyle and wellness. Okay, if you hook up with a nutritionist or a financial uh, fitness coach, let's say, or a fitness person, personal trainer, chiropractor, doctor of some sort, that might be a very strategic re a relationship to have. And I know I have one right now. I got a relationship with a chiropractor I'm working with. And he's got tons and tons of clients that he can send my way. And I've got a following I can send his way. So there's that mutual beneficial relationship, right? And then the last thing that I thought of of this list is financial to business consulting and coaching. This is you, Amanda, right? You're teaching people velocity banking, but you also have an end game in mind to help these women start businesses or build their business. So whether they're starting or whether they have a business or whether they're, you know, doing okay or even thriving in their business, you can provide business coaching. So that client might say, well, I, I'm pretty good with my finances. I'm like, okay, that's, you might be, you might have a good read on your finances, but business coaching, business consulting is a whole nother ball game of service that you can provide so that people maximize their efficiency with their money, taxes, strategy planning you know, developing standard operating procedures, SOPs for short, right, et cetera, et cetera.